hi we are engineering brothers in our previous classes i have told you about our resistive load and i have considered the same source or same voltage source over there that is the alternating time voltage source but here i should consider or i have to consider the inductive load over here so you can clearly see that the inductive load is present over there and uh, the source voltage is present or connected and that is our voltage source which actually gives us the current waveform which is flowing towards our inductive circuit over here okay so by using our self inductance of our inductive circuit there is certainly uh emf is been present over there okay so what is the emf induced across our inductive circuit because of our current i what is that the value should be e which is minus l di divided by dt okay so this is our emf induced across our inductive circuit because of our current i okay so moving on if i do apply the kvl across this closed loop what is the equation so kvl means all the voltages or voltage across all loop and the summation of all those voltages are is equal to zero okay so this is our source voltage and this is our another voltage which is emf so what is the equation over there the equation should be which is is equal to zero okay so if i do make proper rearrangement over here i have got this is our equation which is v is equal to e e means our emf induced across our inductor okay so if i do neglect this minus sign over here this minus sign is actually indicated that the emf induced across our inductor is preventive of our rate of change of current okay which means i can say or i can do consider that e is only the value which is l di by dt so if i do consider the value which is l di by dt and uh, for our sake of voltage source if the voltage source is sinusoidal then the current should be sinusoidal because of our waveform you can see that if the this is our current source then this one will be our voltage source and both in sinusoidal in nature so if i take the instantaneous current is which is i am sign omega t so right now if i do put this small i inside our kvl equation which is been given over here so what is the voltage expression let us see that so if i do consider that the current is this one so what will be the voltage equation let us do that okay so what is the voltage equation we know that v is equal to l di by dt okay l d dt if i put the instantaneous current over here inside our bracket if i put the value of our small current what is the value the value should be look like this one this one should be l this one is im cos omega t and once again i just need to take the derivative of d dt of omega t okay so what is the ultimate value that we have got over here the ultimate value should be l im multiplied with omega m sorry omega because of this one and i have got 
cos omega t okay and once again if i do consider this factor as vm and if i do take the cos omega t as written like this one which is sin omega t plus 90 degree so which one is our vm the vm should be the vm should be l i m omega okay and which one is our so this one is our vm okay so without wasting any time i just need to compare the voltage equation and the current equation and after that i will get the phasor diagram from these two expression over here so if i should write from the instantaneous voltage over here i have got this is our expression which is vm sin omega t plus 90 degree where the vm is look like this one the vm should be l i m omega okay the next one is very very interesting over here so moving on towards my next part i just need to draw the phasor diagram over here okay so which one is our phasor diagram this one is our phasor diagram and according to the phasor diagram if i do plot this two wave from over here i have got these two simultaneous wave from which is present over here okay so this is our voltage wave from this one is our voltage wave from and this one is our current wave from so if i do compare these two expression i have got the i is this one which is i am sin omega t okay so which is this one and if you do compare along with this wave from here you can see that because of this sin omega t it has started from zero and it has expanded like that and it is going like that okay so this wave from which has started from zero is nothing but the instantaneous value of or instantaneous wave from of this small line okay and which one is our voltage wave from the voltage wave from has started well in advance and uh, well in advance compared with our current wave from by 90 degree and it has started uh, somewhere like the two, uh, this one so it has started from here okay that is why this is our voltage wave from and the equation should be vm sin omega t plus 90 degree i want to repeat this portion once again if i do plot these two wave forms over here we have got these two wave forms over here and the current wave from has started from zero as you can see that if i do plot the i am sin omega t i have got or i can understood that the wave from has started from zero and it has Uh, been flown in a sinusoidal way okay the next one is the voltage wave from which is well in advance and it has started 90 degree advance compared with our current wave from over here and you can clearly see that the voltage wave from has started uh, from over here and it has a phase difference of 90 degree in between our voltage and current wave from over here so this is our phasor diagram or phasor wave from over here so clearly we can see that the current is our reference phasor diagram and the voltage is well in advance or it is leading compared with our current wave from and leading by 90 degree over here okay so the voltage wave from is leading 90 degree compared with our current wave from over here and you can clearly say that or you, you can clearly define that the voltage is leading by 90 degree over here okay so you can say that the voltage is leading current 
by 90 degree or you can say that the same thing you can say that the current is lagging voltage by 90 degree over here. the same the same these two statements or these two statement are same over here or you can clearly say that the current is our reference waveform we always do consider that for any type of uh, waveform the current should be our reference waveform and the voltage is always leading or lagging compared with our current waveform over here okay so for our inductive circuit the voltage waveform is leading by 90 degree and you can clearly say that over here and how uh, how can i say that always do remember that the phasor waveform has a rotation of anti clockwise okay so you can clearly see that the voltage is taking first a voltage has the advance or it is leading compared with our current waveform and because of our anti clockwise waveform you can clearly say that or you can clearly understand that the voltage is well in advance compared with our current waveform and the advance angle or the advance rate or the leading by 90 degree over here and if you do plot these two equations of waveform over here in order to compare these two waveform you can clearly see that this is our current waveform uh, which has started from zero and the voltage waveform has started somewhere advance uh, of by 90 degree compared with your current wave from over here. Hope you have understood my total analogy over here. If you still have any doubts, let us know in the comment section below. Hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel. Okay, so I think I have covered up all those things, but uh, the next one is uh, coming over here. So, in our second part. I will do complete uh, the rest of the expression of our inductive circuit over here and why do I consider the inductive resistive and capacitive circuits over here um, then uh, that will give you more ideas uh, in our future classes that is why I keep on telling you to stay tuned with our channel so I want to give you two minutes to note down after this one and after that I will conclude my classes so the time starts now
The next one is very very interesting over here. So in our previous part of my videos, I have given you on how do I connect the voltage waveform along with our only inductive load is present over there and uh, the waveforms uh, are look like this one so if I do plot these two individual current and voltage uh, waveform over here I have got this is our waveform and you can clearly see that there is a phase difference in between our voltage and current over here the voltage is leading by a factor of 90 degree over here so if you do plot these two expressions over here I have got this is our waveform and you can clearly say that or you can clearly see that I have indicated that there is a 90% advancement compared with our current waveform over here so the voltage is well and truly in advance by 90 degree uh, phase factor or phase angle factor compared with our current waveform and in our phasor diagram or phasor wave shape or phasor waveform I can see that the voltage is leading by 90 degree compared with our current and you can oppositely or you can clearly say that current is lagging voltage by a factor of 90 degree over here so I have cleared all your doubts I think uh, but if you still have any doubts let us know in the comment section below we will be there to help you to understand all those uh, expressions or all those concepts in a more simplest or in a more logical way that will be better for all of you to understand in a more logical way okay so moving on towards my next part uh, which is uh, I have established or I can say in my resistive load also for our AC source the RMS value should be established over here okay for DC current or DC circuits the RMS value itself present over there so we no longer do require the maximum value for our DC circuit over there because all the calculations are made in RMS value for our DC circuit okay but for our AC circuit we just need to have a converse, conversion over here so we need to convert the maximum value into RMS value after that we can have our ratio of voltage divided by current which is our inductance value or um, inductive reactance value over here so let us do that so Vm means root 2 cross V RMS ok so the maximum value is nothing but root 2 times compared with our VRMS value ok so next one is L root 2 I RMS which is our because of this maximum current over here I have converted that factor as our RMS value and the next one is multiplied with omega ok so the next one is I just need to put the ratio of VRMS divided by RMS IRMS but before I go into that the root 2 root 2 will be eliminated so the ratio should be VRMS divided by IRMS so what is the value for that the value should be L cross omega ok so I have taken this VRMS divided by IRMS and root 2 root 2 will cancel each other and I have got this is our factor over here so if I do elaborate uh, this factor over here I know that the omega is our angular frequency ok so what is that the omega should be omega is equal to 2 pi f ok so just put the value of omega over here so what is the ultimate value of our factor which is L multiplied by 2 pi f and in total I can say that 2 pi f L so you can use this expression you can this you can use this expression also so these two expressions are very very important for any type of uh, calculative perspective uh, 
regarding our inductive or capacitive load or regarding any type of problems of R, RL, C, RL circuits over there. So these formula is very very important and this V divided by RMS is nothing but is indicated as XL. Okay, so what is the XL means? The XL is nothing but our inductive reactance. It is called inductive reactance. Inductive reactance. Okay, just like our resistive circuit over there, V is equal to IR. Here, the expression is V is equal to XL I RMS. So, I can write the expression as this total as our XL. Okay, so in total, I can write, I should write it over here. So, in total, I can write the expression V RMS divided by I RMS which is nothing but our Excel. Okay. Or I can write this as V RMS which is nothing but our I RMS multiplied with our Excel. Okay. So this is similar with our previous analogy which is V RMS is equal to I RMS multiplied with our resistance. Okay. So this is quite similar with our previous resistive load circuit over here. So you can clearly say that this is the resistive factor of our for our inductive circuit and we can say or we can write that expression or the excel as our inductive reactance and how do i make the proper arrangement of this inductive reactance i have shown you over here so inductive reactance have two part first one is l multiplied with omega and the next one is 2 pi fl so i just need to erase or to clear your mind to write the final expression over here that will be better for all of us so what is the expression for our inductive reactance the inductive reactance is clearly considered as our is clearly considered as our xl xl which is this one which is this one which is omega l and in total we can write that 2 pi fl and this is called our inductive reactance over here. Hope you have understood my total analogy over here. If you still have any doubts, let us know in the comment section below. So I just need to do summarize my class over here, which is I have taken the voltage source and the load is purely the inductive load over here. And because of these EMF equations, I have considered the KVL equation and E means L dy by dt and I have um, covered or I have calculated the voltage expression which is clearly seen that the voltage is leading compared with our current waveform over here. So I have shown it over here in my phasor diagram. Okay. And if I do uh, plot the voltage and the current waveform in a simultaneous way, I have plotted this is our waveform over here. And uh, clearly I have defined or I have separated the maximum value compared with our RMS value and after plotting or putting those values I have got this is our XL which is nothing but omega L which is 2 phi FL. Okay. So this is our expressions of our inductive reactance over here and I have clearly defined the uh, exact definition of this inductive reactance which is uh, XL cross I RMS which is V RMS. So this is our bit summarization of this class of our inductive circuit over here hope you have understood my total analogy over here i think i have covered up all those things over here that is why engineering brother classes are always very very special and i no longer do require to uh, keep on saying that uh, these classes are very very special as you can feel or you can understand that i have totally given you the best possible explanation over here that is why I am asking you for more support. You can spread my videos 
towards your engineering friends towards la larger audience or you can uh, give me more constructive suggestions and uh, there i will try my level best uh, to include those suggestions to improve our videos because improvement uh, is not ending we can improve our journey by all of us or by any means okay so you can give me constructive suggestions in order to improve our videos or in order to improve our uh, channel so do support our channel because these type of videos are altogether missing they are clearly jumping on our rlc and rc uh, circuits over there but i want to take the baby steps to cover up all those things so first i will do cover the rlc then after that i will cover the rl rlc and rlc that will be better for all of us to digest all these concepts in a more uh, constructive way okay that is why i keep on telling that the engineering brother classes are always very very special and i no longer do require the special introduction for my channel because we have uh, completed almost 210 plus videos over here and i will keep on making those videos so all i need i need your support okay so do support me and please like my videos okay and if you still have any doubts let us know in the comment section below i think i have covered uh, the inductive load over here uh, and uh, the voltage source is uh, single phase ac okay so Thank you uh, and goodbye. If you like my video so what are you waiting for please do subscribe my channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned to the channel thank you and goodbye